Hey dolls, I wanted to demo my stage one garment for you today. Um, my experience in this video is with Dr. Mejio at Mia Aesthetics in Miami, Florida. So I suggest that if you are going to another facility or seeing a different doctor that you check and um, specifically with that facility to see what their practices are. Now, again, I'm going to be speaking strictly on my own experience and letting you guys know why I thought it was the best idea to get my stage one through them. But first, what is a stage one garment um, and how does it differ from a stage two? I'll demo how to put my foams and boards inside and um, a little bit about sizing and what was inside when I woke up from my surgery. So first, a stage one garment differs from a stage two um, right off the bat in shape and material. Um, de definitely in compression level. Compression level is not as high in a stage one garment and you can see very clearly that this is very boxy in shape on the sides and does not have that like sculpted waist that you would see in a typical stage two garment. The material is really very swimsuit like. It's very, very loose by comparison. Um, it still does offer a level of compression that you need after a traumatic surgery, like the one that you are probably researching. However, it does not offer the level of compression that a stage two garment would and beyond. So that's the first thing. Um, the surgery is a very traumatic on your body. Um, the midsection is, or any other areas that are treated are going to be very sore and have a lot of swelling for a really long time. So the stage one garment for a couple of weeks, again, check with your facility. But I typically see um, people wearing it for two to three weeks, sometimes two to four, it depends. Um, we can get into how long a stage two garment takes to be delivered in another video. Um, but the purpose of it is for those first few weeks after you come out of surgery and the sensitive, uh, really sore body needs this particular level of compression. So again, um, very boxy in shape. A lot of people ask, well, can I just tailor my stage one garment and use this throughout my recovery? No, because it again is not going to be the same level. Our bodies are going to change after the surgery and you're eventually going to need a deeper level or a higher level of compression on your body. And this just will not um, afford you that period. Like bottom line, straight up, this garment just will not afford you that, that um, level of care and compression that you need. Secondly, um, when I woke up from Mia Aesthetics, um, well, first of all, let me back up. I decided to purchase this at the facility directly. Um, I see a lot of women asking, or a lot of dolls, I should say, asking about where they can get their stage one garment. Um, I do see that there are some places um, in cities where there's lots of surgeries or surgery centers um, offering stage one garments for purchase before the surgery. Now, to me, I don't understand how that makes sense. I never would have been able to guess my size. Um, I wasn't sure how someone else was convinced that they were going to be able to guess my size, especially if I was um, before surgery. You're definitely going to need to have this um, purchased before you go into the procedure because you leave the facility wearing this. So there's no way that you can leave the facility without having one. And for me, the best option was to purchase the garment through the facility. That way the doctor could measure my body after the procedure was over and they could give me the best garment for um, my size. Now, the day I went into my pre-op appointment was the day that Mia Aesthetics measured me for this garment. And just to further drive my point home, I woke up in a size bigger than what they predicted my measurement would be. So when I went in for my pre-op appointment, they predicted that I would need an extra large or an XXL. This is actually a 4XL. And um, I think they 
opt to go a little looser. I see that everyone says their stage one garment is so loose. The boards are flopping around. You're getting looser and looser because you're losing swelling as time goes on. But I think that they know what they're doing and they do this for a reason. And I trusted that if the garment felt too big on me, um, I would trust that a surgical center that uh, practices hundreds of these surgeries um, on a regular basis knew better than I did, especially if this was my first time. Even if it's your second or third time, again, the facility practices this on a regular constant basis, so they do know what they're doing. Um, um, I, I think a lot of people want to know what it's like when you wake up in the garment and what is inside, and so I'll just demo really quickly let me show you. I know I got sidetracked there and I was about to say something else about size, but I think you get my point. Um, these are called ABD pads, and this is what Mia Aesthetics uses. These are what they look like when they're open. This is what Mia Aesthetics pads the inside of a garment with and what you'll wake up with. I think that's what I was going to say is that you need to have this um, like ready to go because you can't leave the center without wearing it. So it's not like you can get it the day or two after your surgery. Like you just need to make sure that you prep for it. And I just don't understand how some people can be so confident that they can predict what size you're going to be when you come out of surgery. So that's why I wanted to get it through me. I think you've gotten my point now. Um, all right. So I'm going to demonstrate how to put this on and then I'll show you these. These actually, there's no way that I can show you inside this garment because it's going to cover my whole body. So these pads actually go over the incisions. Um, there won't be anything else inside your garment when you wake up from the surgery. There won't be any foams. There won't be any boards. You start using those. Um, when you get clearance from your doctor at your um, post-op appointment where you see your surgeon. Um, but when you do wake up, these are inside the garment. And they're a really good, really big, basically um, much better than gauze pad. And so when I went back for my post-op appointments, because I kept draining, particularly from this incision, a lot, um, I asked them for more of these and they gave them to me. So I still have a ton because I didn't need as many as I thought I would, but I'm glad I had them. Um, so little pro tip, um, if you need more pads, ask at your post-op appointment. So demonstration on how to put it on, and then I'll demo with the foams and boards. This is going to be really, really difficult because you're going to be super sore in the middle. Um, you're going to be, especially if you get your arms then you're going to be even more sore. Um, I did not have that experience. I have a highlight on my Instagram page that you can check out in regards to my arms and chin experience. I had a very pain-free experience with my arms. I did not, I mean, of course they're sore. So of course you're going to just like move slowly, but I did not have a ridiculously excruciatingly painful experience with my arms. Nonetheless, you will need to move slowly. And what you're going to do is Open it all the way up. Now I tied the top of the garment, just backing up a little bit again. Um, the butt area is super stretchy, a lot more stretchy than the rest of it. And it's very roomy. They all go down to the knee and they have straps that go over your shoulders that have hooks similar to like a bra. And you would hook them like this. And most of them have a couple of rows of hooks so that you can adjust whatever level that you like. However, mine was too big for me, so I like to tie it at the top. I'll show you that when we get it on. So always, um, in any video that I'm going to demo a garment, I always suggest that you open it all the way up. The, this particular stage one has zippers on the sides, no hooks or anything in the front and you open up everything. So undo the zippers, undo any of the hooks, undo the shoulders, and there will typically be a tag in the back, so you'll know which part is the back, but you can always tell that from where the butt area is. 
So you'll step in feet first. There's really no other way to do it. And this is usually where it gets really hard because this is the area that has that new stuff <laughs> and we're not used to having to pull so hard. It's going to be sore. You're going to be bruised. It's going to be bigger. You're going to have to finesse this garment. So I did a lot of shimmying back and forth, um, pulling at the same time. My nurse actually suggested pulling this out away from my body so that I went up and over the booty. But just that alone is going to take you several minutes. It did for me. It might not for you, um, but take your time. Get it up all the way. The trick in these garments, no matter the stage, is pulling up at the leg first and getting the legs situated correctly. And then you're setting yourself up for success for getting the rest of it up and over. So you really want to make sure that that butt area is secure. The bottom of that this, you know, butt material matches the bottom of your natural butt. This is not going to misshape you in any way. It's not going to do any harm to you. Don't worry about where the creases are. This is just like a general idea of where you should have your garment. So pull it up. Make sure it's sitting comfortably and nicely. Then you're going to put these arms on. So you're going to do these hooks. Again, I needed them on the very, very last one. I won't tie them because I'll show you how it's actually supposed to look. So you hook them together. Put them up and over your shoulder, leaving the zippers undone for now. Leave everything open. And now I'm demonstrating this without the foams and boards yet, because again, the first few times you're going to need to do this, you don't have clearance yet to use those foams and boards. Now, typically a garment like this is going to come below the breast. So you're going to have this area open here, but my torso is short and the garment is very big. So I have all this material left here, just like overalls. So I just kind of, like I said, tied at the top here and they kind of came up above my nipples, but didn't entirely cover the entire breast. So I had a tank top on that covered this. I did not wear a bra under my tank top. I had my tank top only and the garment for the first several weeks, actually, even into my stage two, I would not wear um, a bra. I would just wear my tank top. For the purposes of this video, this is what I'm wearing tonight, but you'll want to have a tank top on before you do any of this. Let me back up again. You'll have your tank top on, no bra, and then push that tank top down into this area here, all around. I have some Primo, great, seamless, really buttery soft, super comfy tank tops in the link tree in my bio. Highly suggest you go check them out because they're so comfortable that I actually ended up ordering another, they come in a pack of three. Again, seamless, no seam down the side. I actually ordered a second pack of three in my first month, so. Now that tank top's all tucked in, you pull these arms up and over. It's going to take you a really, really long time. And then you'll want to, I never hooked these. Maybe sometimes I did when I started using foams and boards. But there's three. You can do it. You don't have to. It doesn't really matter. And then you zip it up. And then you zip it up. You're going to need help doing this for the first few times. 
because you're going to be in a lot of pain. How sexy is this, you guys? They even add lace here at the bottom of the leg for us to feel even sexier. <laughs> um, okay, now I will demo with foams and boards. Actually, before I demo with the foams and boards, what you're going to do to take this off before you're using foams and boards is just do everything that you just did in reverse. So the last thing that you did, start with that. Move on to the second to last thing you did, just kind of like reverse everything that you just did. Keep those arms on. Open up all of this, open this, let it just fall. You can unhook these as you take it off if you want to, but that's not really necessary. And then again, to take it off, you would pull out. It's gonna hurt here as you pull out. And then you would pull it down over the butt and shimmy your way out. Lots of shimmying in these garments. Shimmying saved my life. Now we'll go back to the foams. Again, you wanna pull it up to your waist and get comfy. Also, this has, you can't tell because I'm wearing black underwear, so it's not really showing through, but this actually has a flap. They all come with a flap. Not really many of them come with zippers. Um, I've not seen a lot of those in the surgery community. Some do, I'm sure, but the flap was really comfortable and it's only about that long. So it's really only like, it's, you need to take it off if you're doing more than just peeing. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, so we have foams, which also, guess what's in my link tree in my bio? A five pack of foams. Now, foams are just what they sound like. They are a foam material. They are also kind of stretchy, really flexible. They're just meant to provide a layer of comfort. They help the skin and the nerves regenerate after all of that. Like I keep calling it trauma, but that's really what it is. And the um, foams aid in your recovery. Um, and not to mention add a layer of compression inside this garment. So I have a five pack in the link tree in my bio that you should check out because these are the most luxurious, soft, delicious foams that you'll ever find. And from what I hear, the ones that are sold at Mia, Mia Aesthetics are pretty hard. I actually have a foam that I got in a pack with um, a backboard and an outboard that I'll show you in a second, it's over here. And this is like kind of hard and inflexible. And you can't tell by like, you can tell by the sound, listen. These are much softer. They're much floppier. This one doesn't flop around that good. This is really more hard and dense and that's like not that comfortable. It doesn't mold that well. So I don't really like the foams that are like coming in packages these are really nice. So you'll need three, two on the side, and one in the front. And I actually flip the side ones over like this and use them this way. So let's start slowly. You're going to do your first one. You're going to lay it over the garment so that the top of it is at you know, covers the area that you had treated. And by treated, I mean light bowed. So you cover that bra strap area. And even though it's on top of the garment, you'll hold it in place, pull that garment out around it, and tuck it in. And the bottom will be secured by the garment while you get your other one. Do the same thing. Hold it in place. Make sure that top is covered, that top area is covered by the foam. You kind of want to 
generally, generally, it's not going to be perfect, line them up in the front so that there is even compression all around. So you want to kind of get them symmetrical on both sides. So you just look in the mirror from the front and see that this pretty much covers the same area. We'll put a foam here. Again, lay it over the garment, pull the garment out around it while you keep that foam in place and shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. You guys are going to be doing the shimmy dance for several months. Pull this up while holding on to these to keep them in place. Adjust yourself and get that third foam. That third one goes long ways. You got a lot of area to cover here. That lipo starts from the bra strap. So I'm going to put this foam right at the bottom of my breast. It's going to go down right to the top of my crotch, well below the belly button where that lower belly pooch area is because that's where probably they did most of the work. Of course, they got the rest of this too, but that's the that's that area right there. So you really want to make sure that everything is in place. I'm actually going to put this under these foams when I get it in. But again, you'll hold it in place. Pull that faja down and tuck it in. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. At this point, you can then tuck these, this one, this front one, inside. The side ones, you'll get into groove. You'll figure out how you do this for yourself. You'll, you're going to do it so many damn times per day that you'll get it down pat by day five to ten, trust. So now you have these things in. You're feeling like a Stay Puffed Marshmallow. You ain't done yet. This is the most popular board. I also have this in the link tree in my bio. This one's the M&D brand. However, I have a different brand. I believe it's called Yes Indeed in the link tree in my bio. We'll bring you straight to Amazon to purchase. This is a flexible material. It is a little bit firmer than the foams. It still doesn't make any noise, but it holds its shape. It's a little bit thicker and helps shape the back while adding that compression to that back area. So you, and it also has like the cutout for the booty. You want to make sure that this point is lined up with that top point of your butt. So what you'll do is slide this in. I like to put it underneath my foams, so I'll adjust these in a second, but I'm going to slide this in first. Some people put their backboard in first. Maybe I even did that. Some days were different. So again, shimmy, figure it out. Things are going to fall out. Things are going to be very annoying. Yeah, I did put the backboard in first when I did it, so... Figure out whichever way you want to do it, whichever way you want to start with. I'm not sure if this is actually straight, but I feel like it is. You'll just need to check the mirror. Great. So we're all set. You pull these arms up and over. And you're chubby again. It's necessary, it's necessary, it's necessary. So just expect to have to do this for the greater part of a month. Until you get that stage two, and we'll get to that soon, you're going to have to do this. So then zip up again around the foams. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because now you have these added layers inside. But this is um. This is what gets you started on that road to beauty, ladies. All right, you're all set here. You're ready to go. I wore sweatpants and sweatshirts for the majority of my recovery. If you're recovering in the summer, I, I had my surgery in December, but if you're recovering in the summer, maxi dresses all day, every day. You can get like t-shirt style maxis so that they cover this area here, these straps. That's all there is to it. And then again, to remove, we're going to reverse everything that we did. 
start backwards, do it again. Bring it all down. I like to bring, well, I think I probably brought the side ones out first. You can just pull them out. They're a lot easier to get out than they were to get in. Pull that board out. Pull down, round over the booty, and shimmy your way out. That's it for stage one. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna post this with um, Q and A if I didn't cover some of the stuff here. Um, but just a bit about sizing before we go. Manufacturers are not the same. They're not all using the same size guides. Please trust whoever is sizing you. Know that the size you're getting is the size that you need. Know that snatching does not really start until, for me, really a, like several weeks. My, my snatching, my waist shaping didn't really start until week eight. If I'm being generous, probably even later. And that is well into the time that I was wearing my stage two. And you can find out about more on stage two in another video. Um, and whether or not I used foams and boards on that one. However, just remember that sizing is different for every manufacturer, whether you're getting a stage one, a stage two, or a stage three, which is three months and beyond. And do not, please, please, please for yourself, do not assume that just because you have one size in a stage one, that you will be a similar size in another size uh, stage one, or especially in a stage two. They are made completely differently. They're most likely made by different manufacturers. So if I had a 4XL on my stage one, I'm not gonna guess that I need a 2XL or an XL or wanna snatch quicker and faster and get a large, it's, it's, that's not gonna work. You definitely need one of these. Guess where this is also available? Link tree in my bio. They're like a dollar a piece. They'll bring you straight to Amazon. I have like a pack of three or four. And um, you're going to need to measure yourself for your garments every single time that you purchase a new one beyond stage one. I washed and dried this garment every day. It does not have any like reinforcements for the material inside it. And by that, I mean like rods or boning, which again, I'll get to in stage two. I did not um, worry about throwing it in the washer and dryer. If you do not have, um, and also I didn't need a second stage one. Um, every day I got a massage and every day from that massage, I would drain and that like fluid would get on me so I knew that I was gonna need to take a shower every single day after that massage and while I was getting my massage and showering those are the two times that I'm really not gonna have the garment on perfect opportunity for you to wash and dry it because I had a washer and dryer it was easy to do I did not need a second stage one totally not necessary if you do not have a washer and dryer that's a completely different story when I came back to where I live in New York City after my surgery in Miami I was in an Airbnb in my first 10 days post-op and I had a washer and dryer in it which was absolutely key so just another note if you're looking for a place to stay make sure it has a washer and dryer because you're going to need to wash this even if you do get a second one because you just want to you're gonna need to wash and dry it. And you can't really easily get to a laundromat. Trust and believe you can. not When I came back to my apartment in New York City, um, after I came back from Miami, my washer and dryers in my building are like in the basement. And I wasn't easily able to wash and dry this every day. So there's an instance where you might need a second one, but I really would suggest saving that money for your stage two and beyond garment and for massages. You can easily get away with washing and drying this every single day. But again, like I said, if you don't have a dryer, this needs to air dry, then it might be a good idea to get a second one. On to the next one.